As I explained in the previous episode, the Hungarian attack in Transylvania was thrown back by the end of September. Due to the arrival of the second Ukrainian front, the southern Carpathians could not be reached, so the front line ran through the middle of Transylvania to Arad and the Danube River. To the north, German 1st Panzer Army and Hungarian 1st Army were still holding back the Soviet forces. On their right flank, the remnants of German 8th and 6th Armies were weak, along with Hungarian 2nd Army that had to retreat to Torda. At Arad, Hungarian 3rd Army also had to go on the defense, it received the Hussar Division from Poland and two reserve divisions as reinforcements, but to its south, only smaller German units were present, too weak to form a coherent line. In early October, hostile Slovak units behind 1st Panzer Army had to be contained and eliminated, but this gave a chance to the Soviets to take the Dukla Pass. As another attack was feared from southern Transylvania, 14 German divisions arrived to reinforce Army Group South, while Hungarian 1st Army gradually retreated to the Arpad Line. 3rd Army was in a more precarious situation, its weak units had to guard the line from Nagyvárad all the way to Temesvár, a roughly 150 km long section of the front. To strengthen the line, 3rd Panzer Corps was amassed at Debrecen, but the Soviets struck first. On the 6th of October, 2nd Ukrainian Front attacked with three mechanized and two cavalry corps and 17 rifle divisions. They overwhelmed the 20th Infantry and 4th Replacement Divisions, so 3rd Army retreated to the Tisza River. Hungarian 1st Armored Division counter-attacked, along with 1st and 13th Panzer Divisions, but their only achievement was that they could cover the orderly retreat of the infantry. The next day, after weeks of heavy fighting at Torda, Hungarian 2nd Army also started its retreat from the Kolozsvár area to avoid encirclement. Its 25th Infantry and 9th Replacement Divisions were beaten, and the Soviets even crossed the Tisza River on the 10th of October down south at Szeged. 3rd Army retreated all the way to Kecskemét, where the newly arrived Hussar Division was able to stop the attack. Its right flank in the Bacska region was exposed, only the 31st SS Volunteer Grenadier Division was there, still forming, along with a single regiment of the Brandenburg Division. To its left, 2nd Army and various German units retreated to the Tisza, but at least three Panzer Divisions stopped a major Soviet attack at Debrecen in a huge tank battle, so 1st Army could also retreat and provide cover for its neighbors. By the 15th of October, all territories east of the Tisza River were given up, the region between the Tisza and the Danube was in the process of being lost, the railway network, many stations and most factories were destroyed by Allied bombing, so even though the Hungarian army still had one million men, they could not be properly equipped and trained, further resistance was pointless. Regent Horthy decided that the time had come to capitulate to the Soviets, something which he had been trying to avoid for more than a year. On this day, he announced on the radio that the war was lost and that Hungary should not sacrifice itself for an alliance that had failed due to German contempt and violent abuse. Commanders of 1st and 2nd Armies, Generals Miklos and Veres, were to go over to the Soviets, while Commander of 3rd Army, General Heslényi, was left out as he was strongly pro-German. However, Horthy's instructions were vague, and the two army commanders could not carry them out anyway, as many officers were unwilling to turn on the Germans. Their allies reacted quickly and sent troops to Budapest to deal with Horthy. His surviving son was abducted by the Gestapo, after which he was convinced to step down, to be replaced by Ferenc Szálasi, leader of the Arrow Cross Party, the local Nazi organization. Hungarian troops loyal to Horthy were disarmed, pro-German officers were installed to all posts, while members of the Arrow Cross took over the administration. Horthy was taken to Germany, along with prominent politicians like former Prime Minister Miklos Kállai. The Hungarian army continued to fight, but more and more men deserted 
and went over to the Soviets. The remaining units were put under direct German command. In the end, General Miklos managed to escape and took most of 2nd Mountain Brigade with him, but General Veresh was arrested as he became suspicious to the Germans when his 2nd Armored Division retreated further west behind the Tissa. 2nd Ukrainian Front attempted again to encircle German 8th and Hungarian 2nd Armies, but they were beaten back. 1st Panzer Army and Hungarian 1st Army also retreated, abandoning the Carpathians, so by late October the new line ran from the Dukla Pass through Tokaj, Eger, Szolnok and Kecskemét, reaching the Danube River at Sholt. The retreat was orderly, no large units were encircled by the Soviets, Hungarian 13th and 16th Infantry Divisions, along with 1st Mountain Brigade, did their best to avoid such a fate. The next Soviet attack came at Kecskemét, which fell on the 1st of November, as 23rd Reserve Division was unable to stop the two mechanized corps and the newly arrived Romanian forces. 5th and 8th Replacement Divisions retreated behind the Danube, but the next day a counterattack was launched. Stalin originally wanted to capture Budapest with a direct attack, however, four Panzer Divisions, the two Hungarian Armored Divisions, the Hussar Division and the Feldenhalle Panzergrenadier Division struck the Soviets near Kecskemét, halting them. The capital could not be reached, so a huge encirclement was planned instead, with two major attacks, one from the north, another from the south. Two days later, 25th Infantry Division was pushed out of both Solnok and Zeglid, so the Tissa line had to be abandoned. Within a week, German forces in the area were beaten, Budapest was now very close, although the Hussar Division managed to defend the Chapel Island. To the south, 3rd Ukrainian Front established a bridgehead at Mohach, surprising Army Group F, which had not anticipated major Soviet forces there. Before the end of the month, Pech fell, and in early December, Lake Balaton was reached. By that time, most Axis units were depleted. The average German Panzer Division had four five tanks left, the two Hungarian units were at similar levels. Most of the Border Guard and Fortress units were used to fill up understrength infantry divisions or to fill the gaps. In October, the elite St. Laszlo Division was formed using the 1st Parachute Regiment, Royal Guards and Air Force ground personnel along with motorized artillery, rocket launchers and the 20th Assault Gun Battalion. At the same time, several divisions were disbanded, their troops were used to refill the 12th, 16th and 24th Infantry Divisions, while the 27th Light Division and the 9th Border Guard Brigade received the Seikai Battalions and Fortress Companies, so they became full divisions. The Hussar Division and the two Mountain Brigades were also refilled, their replacement units were removed from the roster. Hungarian 2nd Army was deactivated, its remaining units were placed under German command, and most Hungarian divisions received German neighbors to ensure their determination. However, more and more were deserting. Budapest was now the main target as a major industrial and transportation hub. By the 7th of December, the area to the south of Lake Balaton was cleared of Axis troops, so the front now ran along that lake and Lake Valence. It was manned by weak German and Hungarian units, although both the 1st and 8th Panzer Divisions arrived to assist. Two days later, to the northeast, a new attack commenced at Hotvan against Army Group Frater Pico. Soviet forces soon took Mishkolc and Vats, reaching the Slovak border. A foothold was taken on Chapel Island, just south of Budapest, while further to the south, Nagykanizsa fell, directly threatening the last major oil field in German hands. To prevent the complete encirclement of Budapest, two more Panzer divisions and six independent Panther and Tiger battalions arrived, but the weather did not allow a major offensive, so these units were used in a piecemeal fashion. A counterattack was ordered at the Ipoi River, north of Budapest, but the Soviet fronts were also preparing their next offensive. I hope you enjoyed this episode. 
I will talk about the fall of Budapest in the next one. Until then, see you around!